Alright, I am about to start my very first review of a vlog, in a vlog, and overall, this is my very first content related to my newest, my newest theme for the channel, cartoons. Now, some are, some are great, most are bad, bad, bad. <laughs> the horror. Yeah. So you're basically hearing the theme of my stuff. It's cartoons. Now, I mean, well, I like cartoons more than probably most people. I, I watch a lot of them, but, um, see, one thing that annoyed me is Nickelodeon is an awful cartoon creator. And I am going to say that for real. Nickelodeon is awful at creating cartoons. Other, now at least, Cora's gone and, yeah... So what I'm gonna say is I think I think I've are so what so my history with Cora oh, but this isn't even the main focus I really really need to get to that but first of all I'll tell you my experience with Steven Universe so Steven Universe actually and this is a similar pattern that Gravity Falls and Cora had and those are my three favorite shows I've ever seen in this decade. Um, but Steven Universe started under the radar for me. I was never thinking of it as a high cartoon until slowly but surely it jumped up, and I love the show now. It is great. If anyone has not seen it and are using this um video to infer, you might really like this. This episode was a wham episode. So. But yeah, but once around they had, um, honestly, unlike most people who Steven the Sword Fighter or Giant Woman caught their eyes, it was really after it came back, it jumped back. Coach Steven, best episode I've seen other than the, a few episodes. It is amazing! And I will tell you, the song, and I'm going to admit it right now, Pearl is my favorite of the gems. Yeah. She's really cool. Anyway, so, getting into the episode. So, what we have with Steven Universe is a pr Well, so, we have the three gems adventuring in a place. I don't know what the place is. It was just this field of flowers, and apparently Steven is allergic to flowers. Gasp! No. Well, he he probably is, though. Eh, I have an allergy to grass, so. But anyway, and, and they, um, so after that, Steven sneezes. <gasps> Go sneeze into your thing, says Pearl. I don't know what that thing is. I know it's your elbow. And then, so what happens from there is we have, um, so, um, Garnet, um, says, bless you, I think I remember that. And then, so they go to the warp pad. The warp pad in this show are really cool. I like teleportation as much as I like time travel, which I'll get on in a later video about how most shows mess it up! <laughs> anyway, so, and then, so with the warp pad, they go on the warp pad, and... And they enter like this, they're in this beam, um, up, and then, and Steven, um, um, sneezes downward like this. Uh, I'm flying! And his head pokes outside of the warp pad, um, and he sees other warps. Now, just a bit of background on this show, um, only gems can use warp pads, and... Pearl, Garnet, Steven, and Amethyst are the last of their kind. They u Steven used to be, um, kind of like Rose Quartz in it. Rose Quartz. That was his mom, and she died giving birth to him. So anyway, so the boogers on Steven freeze, and, and he sees those beams. So, once he sees the beams, he goes in and is talking, about, like, how he has seen them, and when he's going to sleep, no, not Spongebob sleep, Spongebob sleep is so annoying, I am picturing it in my head right now, but, um, but what's kind of cool about, um, well, what's interesting, 
So what's interesting is, um, so he can't sleep. Steven's face is all red. He's so tired. Um, they, and then, so, um, so he waits at the door. Um, and with a water gun, because he's afraid something's going to go at him. So, and then Pearl comes with, Steven, we have a special treat for you. You can guess that she gets squirted. No, you can't. Oh, no. No. Anyway, so once she gets squirted, a Amethyst eats all the cookies. It's one of those the details I just remember. Um, and they go on through the war a warp tour, which is a batch of huge callbacks um, to the previous episodes that were great. And I don't remember the episodes off, off the top of my head, but I know they were great. Yeah! 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 But I do know there's one giant woman reference. And a little getting the crap past the radar in there. If you haven't learned, I use TV tropes terms a lot. And so what we get from there is we get, um, so Steven, um, is, once Steven finishes, once that part finishes, um, Steven's laying in his bed, um, and uh, this, this th robot thingy comes crashing through. Pew! the house, and it's got this thing that can repair warp pads. So when the war- so the thing starts repairing the warp pads that were there, uh, was at the gem's place, and then it takes off right in it. It's a robot. Um, what I haven't mentioned, um, is that only gems can use- I might have already mentioned this, but, hey, this is one shot. No do-overs. And so, um, the thing can repair it, and only the gems can go on the war pad, so, yeah. So basically, um, Steven goes into there, um, into the warp with the ro robot, and it turns out there's are, there is, like, tons of these robots. Probably 500, no. It's more like 20, but Amethyst thinks it's a million. Um, and, but, so what happens is... Um, so Steven, um, w the, they overwhelm him, practically, and Steven is flying out the warp into deep space, and yeah, so, however, I love a certain moment, like, the way Garnet comes up, so Garnet comes, saves Steven, um, and they go to the warp station. Now, those little robots... Very, um, oh, and Pearl and Amethyst are there, too. Those little robots are repairing the warp pad. So, with the warp pad's being repaired by those robots. Gasp! I don't know what's gonna, I didn't know what's gonna happen. And then this gem called, uh, then, so they have to hide, because, um, they're all so scared. Um, and Peridot comes out, uh, and that's the name of the new gem. Yes, there is a new gem. So this video has spoilers, which should have been said at the start. Um, she comes down and the gems hide through Garnet's fist, and and so she comes and she um she sees the sticker. Yes, Peridot seems like she's one of those really. She's a very, like, technology character, I feel like. And she's definitely cooler than some characters I've seen on the show. But, but I feel, um, I'll tell you my thoughts later. Um, and so Peridot, um, Dot looks around and d doesn't see anybody. Well, so here's the way to get, so, um, she heads back, she, um, she sees the cracked robot, though. Um, and she actually steps on it. Cruel. Yes, gems can even be robot killers. And what she does from there, she goes back into the warp, and, but, but she's seen the sticker, and she deactivates all her other robots. She's a murderer, so. No, a robot murder, murderer. And so once she goes right back up, she, um, um, Pearl, Amethyst, and Garnet get, start getting freaking out. And, and Garnet smashes the warp pad, smashes it in epic, epic fashion. 
SMASH! So, and once she smashes the war pad, things are about to, um, you find that, and by the looks on Pearl and Amethyst's face, they are, look very, very scared. This was a great, great episode. And then it cuts out after the Garnet face. So, my thoughts on the episode, I have one suspicion. Peridot is going to be a great villain. What, how do I know this? Peridot has already established Cruel. However, I feel like we might have a little bit more of a Death Note style situation, where Peridot is, um, can be a bit of a, is, might be a hero, and it might be the gem, the gems might actually be, um, in my opinion, the gems could be, um, anti-heroes. Really, I feel like they might be criminals right there, other than Steven. And, and I feel like this is a great direction to turn. I mean, we have Adventure Time, which is another show I like. Um, which, I don't feel like any of the major characters are, are that bad. There's anti-villains, and the closest thing they got to a bad guy is Marceline. No, not the bad guy. I meant anti-heroine. Heroine. It's not the drug. And, so yeah, that's the, basically the episode. I loved this episode. On my first viewing, I was not a huge fan of the beginning part, but on my second viewing, it was really, really good. The show, um, Steven Universe... It, I'll have to mention, it has the best background music I've ever heard in a show. I feel like it's, um, it's just amazing to listen to. Each character has their own theme, and that's usually in shows, but not in comedy shows like Spongebob, because they don't care to put them in. Yeah. So, it was a great episode. See, I like, see, I feel like with most shows, the comedy-centered episodes... Oh, and I mean Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by this. The, like, a uh, Monster of the Week episodes are awful. I can't even, I can't even exaggerate my distaste for season three of TMNT. Um, and what, Steven Universe gets the format right. Alongside Gravity Falls, which I think Steven Universe is closer to Gravity Falls than Adventure Time. Adventure Time is a more epic, while Steven Universe, like Gravity Falls, has a lot of character interactions. So, this was my thoughts on Steven Universe's Warp Tour. Great episode, and if you are a fan of this show, this is a must-see. It is in the main plot. It's not, it's not like, it's not like some of them. I feel like the Lion episodes and this, the Ocean Gem ones, I feel... Anyone with, um, Mega Evolution, no, I don't mean Mega Evolution, I mean Fu Gem Fusion, um, and just, those ones establish plots, and those are, con those are what I consider the story arc. And what's cool is, this also brought in many other episodes into the arc, like, you could, um, but I don't remember their names. <gasps> Steven the Swordfighter is also into the arc. I'll get more on the, that later. So, thanks for spending almost 15 minutes of your time watching me r ramble about this in no formal fashion. So, thank you for watching. See you next Friday. No, probably today because I'm going to also do an Adventure Time episode review.